Peter Paul, the pelvis. Yes. Let's do it. It's there. a big ring-like structure, super <laughs> strong. I like to think of it as a pretzel. Just because like if you, you, you like break pretzels, one part of the ring, like, like you always have to look for the surprise second part. Surprised you didn't part. say a sure. donut. I yeah. like that. Or <laughs> sure. I think I have, we have one caveat for this segment is like, look, the pelvic is an extremely strong bone. In terms of damaging it, you can get some small stable fractures in the elderly with falls. A lot of the slides we're going to be showing here are from pretty large traumas that you're hopefully not seeing in the urgent care setting, but we want to give you kind of an idea of what you would yeah, be looking for. what abnormal looks yeah. like. Yeah, because you might get a patient who has a history of pelvic fractures mm -hmm. and you want to know because they might have had some acute on chronic type of injury or something like that. But anyway, let's do it. Absolutely. All right. So we'll talk about the normal anatomy once again. We'll talk about a few kinds of fractures and a few kinds of injuries. We'll start with the normal anterior posterior view of the pelvis. Uh, as you can see, you'll see a nice normal ring that should be smooth and unbroken. You'll see your obturator foramina on the right and left, and then you should look at your acetabulum. And once again, as we did with the hip, we'll talk about a few lines. These are called the Latournelle lines, and these are important to look for because they can uh, identify subtle fractures that you may miss just by looking at a gestalt view of the whole uh, uh, pelvis. So the first one is the iliopectineal line. Once again, goes along the superior aspect of the superior pubic ramus. You have the ischial line, which goes down towards the ischial tuberosity. You have your teardrop, which is the profile view of the lateral acetabular. I'm uh, sorry, the medial acetabular wall. And then you have your acetabular roof, your Shenton line, and your anterior and posterior walls of the acetabulum. And that's going to be on an AP pelvis. This is on an AP view of the pelvis. And the ones you're mainly going to look at are the iliopectineal line and the ischial line cool. for fractures. So we'll start with a <laughs> lateral compression fractures. And like you guys said, these are injuries that are pretty serious. These are very heavy traumas. And these patients are going to want to be treated in the ER and seen emergently. Um, these are pretty, what happens is, you know, say you got T-boned. You know, you got hit from the side. You're going to have lateral compression and you end up with this shearing. And because it is a ring of bone, you end up with either more than one dislocation or fracture. So in this patient, following the ring, you can see there's a little bit of irregularity here. There might be some opening of the cigarette iliac joint. But as you follow it around, you see that there's superior and inferior pubic ramus fractures here with a big step off. Mm -hmm. And then there's sacroiliac iliac dislocation here. And you always want to look at the iliac wing because there's yeah. a Gosh. fracture through the iliac wing here. So this is a pretty severe injury. About 25% of these, if they're closed, actually don't survive. And if they're open fractures, about 50% don't survive. So these are very serious injuries. And these are things that you, you won't miss, you know, but yeah. uh, you might not see in your outpatient setting. I think from our standpoint, you know, in, in terms of clinical thing, lateral compression, like this is probably the more common mechanism. Like you said, it's almost like a squishing from one side. But the biggest thing we th worry about in these and why they're so dangerous is because of that sacroiliac joint, right? The disruption of that, you have a lot of vascular, basically venous beds and plexuses there. When you shear that, you can see how sharp that is, how that gets disrupted. You can bleed into your pelvis and there's really no way of compressing that for externally. So this uh, is where they can yeah. bleed out into that spot. You're almost your entire body intravascular volume yeah. can go i mean it's like a big bowl absolutely yeah. yeah you have your pelvic space you have your retroperitoneal space uh you you have your space around the bladder so these are big spaces that can carry blood and once again the bones here are kind of like sponges full of blood you know rigid sponges so it's not like in surgery they can just tie off a vessel many times these patients have to go for interventional uh, embolization yeah, that's what you do <laughs> of the, ex exactly so we see a few of these every once in a while uh, but these are, once again, serious injuries that need to be treated emergently. Yep. All right. So moving on to a uh, anterior po posterior compression fracture. So you can imagine something squeezing the pelvis in an anterior posterior dimension. And what you're seeing is you're seeing widening of the pubic symphysis here. And once again, it's a clo it's a rigid ring. So if you see widening of one joint, you should look for a fracture or widening of another. So as you follow up the left uh, ischio, iliopectineal line, you see that the left sacroiliac joint looks normal. You continue following along the sacrum, and then you see the right sacroiliac joints widened. And so this is kind of an open book fracture where you imagine a book opening, you know, the pubic symphysis is kind of the middle of the book, and you're opening the whole pelvis like a book. So, Got it. 
Yeah, okay. we have a better view on the next slide too, where it's really, really open. <laughs> exactly. So you can see this patient once again. The pubic symphysis is so diastatic, uh, and then this patient has both sacroiliac joints open. Uh, there's likely fracture of the sacrum. These are hard to see a lot of times. You have the patient's belly overlying. You have bowel gas, but these patients are emergently need to be seen. There are a lot of soft tissues, especially at the pubic symphysis. You have your urinary bladder, your urethra, things that are attached there that are more than likely torn in a patient with this much diastasis and this much injury. Yeah, unlikely in the urgent care setting that you would have a patient like this because they, they cannot ambulate. I mean, if you have to send them out to get an x-ray, like they wouldn't even be able to make it onto the gurn, like to, onto the actual the bed of the, for the x-ray just because it's going to be so painful. They're going to be unstable. Exactly. I mean, if you're concerned about it, this is one of those things where for whatever um, freak reason, like they show up and like you're doing, let's say just you're checking the lateral compression of the hips of the pelvis itself and doing like an AP compression of the pelvis, like you see, feel the laxity, mm -hmm. you should do it on any patient because like it's really tight. You cannot diastase the pubic symphysis in a normal Absolutely. patient just with a little bit of pressure. But if all of a sudden it's like you're pushing down AP, like compressing and it's just like opening up, you got problems. I mean, this is where you won't have pelvic binders in the urgent care setting, but you can get a sheet and just tie it across. So you're going to do it across the greater trochanters and just tie it as try to bring it back to normal anatomic positioning Absolutely. to try to see if you can decrease the amount of bleeding uh, that you'll yeah, get. So that's for compression to compress yeah. the bleeding, kind of maintain yeah. uh, any hemostasis you can. But yeah, that, I mean, hopefully this will never happen to you. Yeah, th <laughs> these patients are usually being brought in by a helicopter, yeah, by an ambulance on a gurney, yeah. you know, and they go straight to the ER, sometimes straight to the OR yeah. uh, immediately. All right, so a vertical shear fracture. These are where uh, one side of the pelvis goes up and the other side goes down. Um, and what you're seeing is you're seeing fractures both anterior to the acetabulum and posterior to the acetabulum, either fractures or dislocations. All right, and so these are called malgain fractures. Once again, if you have a fracture anterior and posterior to the acetabulum, these are uh, unstable injuries, usually from a vertical shear injury. And you wanna look at you know, the whole ring, the other side. Uh, you wanna look for any sacral ulnar fractures. And these patients are, once again, not as severely as the last fracture that we saw, but still unstable and still need to be you know, taken to the emergency room. And typically the mechanism for this is gonna be basically a fall from a height where you know, half of the side of your hip or you know, leg kind of falls and hits first. And the other one keeps going and just pushes it up and kind of tears it in half. Exactly, exactly. Vertical so shear. in that instance, you'd want to check the calcaneus. You'd want to check the tibial <laughs> plateau. You don't want to do the whole axial spine to yeah. make sure there's no associated injuries as well. Got it. All right, moving on, uh, pubic ramus fractures. These are the uh, less common ones that you're gonna see. These are your osteoporotic patients. Mm -hmm. They may have just some uh, groin pain or so. And the, they may have a fall that, you know, ground level fall or so. And these are usually isolated. You'll end up with a inferior superior pubic ramus fracture. Um, usually this obturator ring is also a rigid ring. So if you see one fracture, you want to look for the other side of the ring or some kind of diastasis of uh, something to, that that goes with the one fracture. I was going to say, yeah, the, this is, I was gonna, in the urgent care saying, I can easily see this coming in because an elderly person who just fell on their butt, like mm -hmm. from a ground level fall and like they have groin pain or some hip pain and then you get the x-ray and then you see, can you point out like the lines again to show us like where the fractures are on this? Sure. So if you look at this uh, ring, once again, you want to follow the lines and as you follow, it's pretty subtle but there's a tiny step off mm -hmm. right here and it looks like it extends into the acetabulum here. So that's important to note mm -hmm. because you can end up, now that it's an intraarticular fracture, you worry about arthritis and things like that on the line. If you follow the inferior pubic ramus because you wanna look for a complete uh, or a secondary uh, fracture, there may be a small lucency. It looks mm -hmm. like it's non-displaced, but kind of in this area, there's a small lucency that could be a non-displaced inferior pubic ramus fracture. And that first fracture that you showed us, that we would see if we did that. What was the name of that line that you were mentioning again that you showed us? The iliopectineal line. Iliopectineal line, line yeah. right? Yeah, so that's the line that goes along this border. It's part of the whole ring of the pelvis, yep. but the iliopectineal line definitely has a step off. So that's a red herring. That's something you want to look into. All right, so moving on to the acetabular fracture. Uh, kind of an extension of that last one. These are fractures that extend into the acetabulum and they talk about different columns of the acetabulum. There's an anterior, a middle, and a posterior column. Some classification schemes divide it into five different you know, uh, <laughs> columns, but for the most part, if you see a fracture that is irregular and goes into the acetabulum, 
those need to be worried about a little more urgently because they can cause osteoarthritis. You can end up with what's called protrusio, where the femoral head actually uh, protrudes into the medial aspect. And so if you follow that iliopectineal line here, you can see there's a big step off here mm. and goes down as opposed to the other side. And you end up with the femoral head actually protruding medially to the inter wow. uh, the uh, iliopectineal line as opposed to the other side where the femoral head terminates here and the iliopectineal line is here. I was going to say the teardrop thing is also sound looks like it's missing on the absolutely so affected side. looking at the right side you see a teardrop here on the left side you don't see a normal teardrop you see widening of this joint uh, of this uh, superior pubic ramus and acetabular area because it's rotated and so these are all signs of a uh, acetabular fracture. And you said the teardrop is the reflection of the medial aspect of the acetabular of, rim, Of right? the acetabular wall, yes, Got exactly. It. Okay. And so these are usually, if they're displaced, if they're comminuted, they need to go to surgery. You can get entrapped bone fragments in the joint, huh. and this will cause arthritis, things like that. Got so it. these okay. are important to identify. Sounds good. Yeah, these patients, I was say, clinically, if you do diagnose this on x-ray, these are patients that you would transfer to the emergency department. Yep, yep. Absolutely. Okay. Almost all significant pelvic fractures, barring the isolated superior and inferior pubic ramus fractures in, say, an elderly osteoporotic patient, almost all of those are, if they come to you, they're going to need to go to transfer the ER. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Pete.